New York's Chinatown has been a community since the 1870s, even predating pizza in Manhattan. But when the shutdown happened and these businesses got hit the hardest, it didn't feel like there was much outside help at first. What would you recommend people do? Draw more attention to Chinatown and just try to sustain the businesses. There's like 70 restaurants that are rethink restaurants right now. And they're just like Asian inspired restaurants that are just doing dealing with meals, feeding the community. Winston Chu, the chief strategy officer of Rethink Food, is also worried, which is why he's doing everything he can to end the stigma and hunger Asian communities like Chinatown and Flushing are facing. Winston and other volunteers went door to door Thursday in Knickerbocker Village in the heart of Chinatown. Delivery. Bringing meals to the hundreds of residents who signed up with their door sticker system. Tough times call for tough people. We're meeting with some of the unsung heroes stepping up to hold Chinatown together. A new Welcome to Chinatown initiative is supposed to help draw momentum back to the neighborhood. Can they do it? Hey! Hi. We are here with Jen and Victoria from Welcome to Chinatown. What motivated you guys to start this? Because you guys recently started this nonprofit during the pandemic, right? We believe that Chinatown small businesses are the microcosm of the neighborhood. Like they're really the ones that maintain and preserve the culture of the neighborhood. So it's finding resources for them and helping them identify ways that they can not only just like live throughout the impact of COVID, but also identify new revenue streams for them to sustain like what's to come. One of our most successful initiatives, which was Feed Our Heroes. So it was raising money for donations that could purchase meals for essential workers. We were looking for something that could have consistency across the board. So today, when we wrapped up our Feed Our Heroes initiative, we raised over $150,000 that went back into Chinatown. My like identity and my, yeah, my experience is like really, really rooted in Chinatown. Right now we're at 46 Mott Bakery and we're going to chat with Patrick Mott during New York City's pause. Patrick has been feeding the Chinatown community every single day with free meals serving upwards 300 to 400 meals a day. Businesses like this need to exist because it still serves that community of older population. So this is why you know Patrick's spot is special. Hey, hey what's up Patrick? 46 Mott is like a, your average Chinatown bakery that keeping it old school but with a touch of new. For growing up here, you see stores close down all the time but when they close down, you remind yourself when you get over, how much will you miss this place? That It's that nostalgia that I want to keep in Chinatown. During COVID, tell us about what that was like and what, what made you decide to serve the community. I started making 100 meals a day with the help of our assemblywoman to give out to anyone who needs it, especially the homeless and the elderly in the area. But that just kind of blew up and I started doing 300 to 450 meals a day and I've been doing it for two months straight. It was literally the community coming together, helping the community. It will be an uphill battle, but at the same time, it doesn't hurt to try. I started this conversation and now people are more aware of what's going on. Some heroes serve Dao Fu Fa, right? Just remember that. What do you think about the some businesses that might not reopen again? Do you think people will come back eventually? Yes. Okay. Chinatown is Chinatown. No one can change it. People will come back. Come down to 46 Mott. Come check it out. Who wants a tea egg? Go ahead, grab it. This egg got real small. Ooh, it's saucy though. The Kanto tea eggs, the formula is more simple. Here's like how dad makes it. Everybody pick a zone. Vic, what's your zone of choice? Ideally, the ones my grandma used to make had like all the lap chung. She would like oh, stuff like okay. lap chung and pork yeah, or lap chung yeah, and chicken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, pork. Oh. And she would always stuff way too much things in there. This fat right here, look at that. That's gonna mix in with the rice. Oh my wow. goodness, man. Oh, and they got a piece of lap churn in there. Wow! That one kind of like fell apart in my mouth. Yeah. Just after trying two items here, I don't think 46 Mott's going anywhere, man. No. Dude, this is They're super staple. good. They're so, a staple to the neighborhood. I gotta ask, as all ABCs who care about the community, do you think the nostalgia is strong enough? The pure like desire for the nostalgia, I get it. Like I think that 
this spot's gonna last. I think some more traditional spots are gonna yeah. last, but I don't know if all the traditional spots can last. I, I actually really do. Like, I had my doubts too, but I I do. Part of the thing that does need to change is they need to be open to modernizing areas where they're okay with modernizing. You mean like marketing or even the decor yeah. or signage? Yeah, okay. and just like putting their name out there because it's so typical of Chinese people to not want credit for their work mm -hmm. and just to like kind of stay behind the scenes. We didn't want to come in as saviors of any sorts. Like, we wanted to come in as partners. We actually created a set of values for our initiative and that's one of them is we're not going to come in and tell you what to do. We want to work alongside you, understand like what's meaningful to you, and then build a brand around that. And they've become a lot more susceptible to like knowing that we'll partner with them. They're much more open to to that change because change is hard. We saw so much outpouring love for the community. Even if you know they weren't in the neighborhood, they still wanted to find a way to support the neighborhood. All right, we're finishing up here at 46 Mott, and it was so cool to talk to Patrick about his mission and kind of what he's been able to do during this whole time. Our next spot is Walk Walk. Nostalgia, tradition, and community. That's what keeps Patrick driving forward. You can tell that he wakes up every day with a mission in mind. He could be reselling Supreme or working an accounting job, but he's serving traditional food for the community and the elders. You know, the soul of Chinatown. So we were talking about how resilient this neighborhood is, right? And so you start to see it in the way that they're like, Pretty, you know, they're being scrappy, they're putting together their own outdoor drying areas and everything like that. So it's it's hopeful. Like more than anything, it's really hopeful of what's to come. Hello. Hello. This is why, you know, it matters to stay informed and learn more about like the people behind the community, like who's advocating for like who's actually advocating for you. That's a big thing that we put. We close the first week because we don't know what's go what what's going on. Right? And then after a week, we decided to reopen it. Once the restaurant closed down, it's very hard to reopen it. I lost the kitchen food, all this stuff, you know. I'd rather try to stay open and see what happens. Over here, we are very close to a couple of hospital, police office. We cook a whole big pot of curry and then we serve 500,000 people. It's just helping just keep help the up. business yep. go, helps feed people, yes. kind of gets people involved in the donation process. Yes. Are we gonna just take the menu and then tell them from here? Okay, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go Uncle, go ahead. hey! Hi! Y'all go home, guy! No, okay. <laughs> All right, we got our spread here at Walk Walk. I think Eric was so kind, man. He brought out the works for us. He busted out a dish I've never seen before. You guys smell this? It's called stinky bean and chicken. Yeah. Smells good, actually. <laughs> Wok Wok, which is a Chinese Malaysian spot. I do think that Chinatowns are gonna start to look more like Asia towns, yeah. like Pan Asia towns. Do you guys see that? I think if it can be done in a way where it's like still tastefully honoring the legacy and it's not this pseudo Chinatown mm -hmm. that none of us can identify with. The, the Chinese culture, Chinese food is still the thing that brings people back. And so that's where you still see a lot of restaurants, newer places, still honoring a lot of Chinese cuisine. If Chinatown is only one style of food, obviously, you, people are not gonna come to Chinatown and eat that style of food every day of the week, maybe. The doctors and nurses were eating good when mm. they got the hero meal. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. the thing that we heard about the most was how happy they were to get food from Chinatown. You guys, we're looking at three different types of chicken here at Wok Wok. I have chicken satay, skewers. And then I got the za hong gai. So a little bit like the fried crispy skin versus this one is like the poached. This za hainan, it kind of feels like za di gai a little bit like the Cantonese fried chicken. They do it really authentic here on the bone, Andrew. This is actually, when you're in Malaysia and Singapore, it more tastes like this. Mm. Some of the fancier spots kind of debone it. Of all the places that do, do the Hainanese chicken, I feel like Wok Wok has the best flavor. They also give you like just a ton of meat. I'm glad they kept their kitchen open because clearly their skills are sharp. You don't cook anything like this if you took a four month break. Shout out to Eric. Shout, Shout out to you, bro. Thank you. You, 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 you hit a home run. <laughs> There's a drink down there. The pink one is the Bandung. That's a very popular drink in Malaysia. What do you think about it? It's good. It's like not too sweet. It has a pretty unique rose flavor to it. I like the herbal jelly in it. This was delicious. This is like one of the most modern spots that is like sort of part of the Chinatown narrative, right? But I think the next spot we're headed to is one of the oldest spots that's yep. part of the Chinatown mm -hmm. narrative. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go to Hop Key. I welcome everybody to come here to open a restaurant, any kind of different kind of food. But I still think uh, authentic Food is still be a staple food for Chinatown here. Despite Eric reopening and increasing his presence on delivery apps, he wonders how long the lack of office workers and lunch crowd will affect his business. 
I mean, it just goes to show you that even good restaurants are still struggling. And in the meantime, he'll continue to break even on supplying meals to the nearby hospital workers. Hey, Jen and Victoria, what is the difference between War Hop and Hop Keep? Same family, but like they kind of have different management, but they've all been on the block for a really long time and have been serving the Chinatown community. It's known for like family dinners, people get together. Hop Key is one of those staples and a rite of passage for many. And it serves the quintessential Chinatown cuisine. And in the 40 years it's been owned by his family, he could have never predicted this. But if this cuisine goes away, does it leave forever? And what are Peter's options? Like many business owners, he's left with some hard decisions to make. Peter, man, your family has been in the business for so many years, right? 1968? Yes, yes, it's wow. 1968. I'm sure you guys never closed down for more than a few days at a time. Then COVID hits and you guys are closed down for what, months, right? Yeah, we were closed since uh, what, March 16th. So I reopened for takeout uh, May 2nd. What did it do to the economy of Chinatown? It went from being very busy to basically nothing. Nobody's walking in the streets, no business. So if they shut down, how hard is it going to be to able to reopen? Do they lose their chefs? Do they got to rehire new people or retrain people? Uh, it... That's what's been happening with the, in the neighborhood with other restaurants. They're not open today. My assumption is they didn't have the capacity to go forward. Wow. In the future. Up to 30% of Chinatown businesses might close down forever. Do you think yes. that number is lower or higher than the well, reality? Well, I think that number is pretty much towards maybe 50%. In here, this neighborhood, we rely on lunch. Right, from the courthouse. From the courthouse people and all the, the immigration, you know, for lunch. Right, the government building. Yeah, the government, but yes, they tell you. So if they're locked down, this makes this neighborhood like nothing until 21. Right, it's not a but, takeout style restaurant. No, exactly, it's a family style restaurant. I would imagine a lot of your customers, since you guys have been open since 1968, they came here with their dad or their uncle oh, or their yes, auntie. Yes. They, it's almost like yes, nostalgia. Right. Yes. Kind of the recipes are almost from like 1970, 1980, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. that's almost like its own era of Chinese yes. American mm -hmm. food. This style of Chinese food very much still has its market. Jen, Victoria, do you guys have okay, favorite yeah. dishes here? Can we do like a gong chao Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we have a spread here at Hop Key. We talked to Peter. He was like, yo, this is authentic Chinatown Cantonese food. Like, this is probably what you would call it. You know what I love about this dish is like, you probably can't find this exact dish in China because it's Tazi guy, but they put their own sauce on it. Could you call it Chinatown soul food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a good that's way to look at it. Yeah. So 46 Mott with uh, Pat, he was almost like serving breakfast items for a generation, I want to say it was like probably 60 to 90 years old. And then we went to Wok Wok, which is almost like people from the Chinese diaspora to Malaysia coming back. And I want to say Wok Wok probably only like five years old. And then this spot, Hop Key is almost like, yo, they didn't change anything since 1968. Yeah. But that's the charm. I mean, even just in the chopsticks itself, like this is the chopstick. These are chopsticks I used when I was growing up. Now that everything started to reopen, the Food for Heroes project has sort of come to an end, right? And now you guys are moving on to your next project. So the Longevity Fund, that's our small business um, relief fund. And our goal is to raise $200,000 so that we can issue 40 small business grants, so $5,000 each. The business owners know best what they need. So it could be rent, it can be labor, even things like we're not thinking about. You have to purchase new PPE just to be able to serve your customers. Mm -hmm. That's something that they need a budget for. A lot of these small businesses, I don't think it's anything new, but in the news, many have not qualified for the PPP loans. So huge disadvantage. A lot of it was going to large corporations. I, There's right, such a like, inequity yeah. in how the loans and grants are being distributed. And so th that was really why we felt compelled to start the grant. So I guess, where can people donate to this prosperity fund? Yeah, uh, welcome to Chinatown.com. All the donations can be made there. We have our Made in Chinatown merchandise line that people are you know, really passionate. We're actually launching with Hot Key. So they're having like a mug that's coming out soon. Yep. Yeah, yeah so that you can, can purchase. Yeah. All the profit goes back to Hop Key. Yeah. Okay, all the wow. profit from the new merch line that you guys are launching is gonna go to supporting these businesses. Yeah. Real quick question, obviously some people are gonna be out there. How do you pick the businesses that are gonna get the grants? Like what's the criteria? Whether there's like socio-economical, cultural challenges that prevented these businesses from applying for the loans. 
um, that we're going to look at that and then as well to how do they fit back into the Chinatown community so are these small businesses ones that serve um, our working class community they contribute to like the legacy the heritage those are the ones that we're going to prioritize do you really think that this is like the role that a lot of like second generation ABCs can play because I think a lot of them don't necessarily want to take over the family business or they don't want to open up a business in Chinatown but they can contribute to something like this yeah or even telling stories you know that short yeah. storytelling component I think that this is a story that can be like replicated across other Chinatowns or any town. Chinese people have kind of had a reputation for more like, yo, I'm just gonna take care of me and mine. You guys are kind of like, in a way, breaking from that. Chinatown's the home to my identity and it's the home to where I live now. So um, that's just why I'm so passionate about it. Welcome to Chinatown, Jen, Victoria. Thank you guys so much. I mean, I, I, it's appreciated and uh, yeah, I, I love the heart that you guys have for the community and it's important. And man, I think there's just, uh, It'll be really interesting to see where this goes, but shout out to the fund. I'm, I'm, we're gonna contribute to that fund. Thank you guys for coming to experience the Chinatown the way that we see it and you know, speaking with the people that make this neighborhood what it is. You know, with videos like this, our goal is not to just make you sad and worried. It's really to highlight the people who are trying to make something happen. The people who are trying to communicate with different generations, which is maybe something that hasn't really been done before. If you look at the silver lining, leadership amongst Chinatown is growing, the community is stronger than ever, and it's activating a lot of the second generation that wasn't stepping up before. Now, struggle often breeds unity, and Chinatown has been around for more than a century, and I think it'll be around for a lot longer. Thank you everybody for watching that video. Check out the link down below for the longevity fund. Welcome to Chinatown. Check out the cause. Maybe you guys, if there's nothing like that going on in your local Chinatown, Maybe you could do it. Hopefully this video inspires you guys. And if nothing else, guys, I know you know different people's in different situations, order takeout. And until next time, we out. Peace. Are you worried at all with the whole COVID thing? Like Chinatown's gonna change permanently and a lot of the businesses are gonna close down and never come back? No, I am a nurse. For me, it's about education. If you know what is the thing, you don't have to worry.